Four-wheel steering is actually an antiquated application, dating back to the early days of the automobile. Used typically on farm equipment, military, or for off-road use for getting around tight spots, but those were limited systems, using links and bushings to slightly alter the directional angle of the wheel. In 1977, Porsche developed passive rear-wheel steering for its 928, using a vice axle to counteract the outer rear from towing out, which would cause oversteer. At the time, Porsche was attempting to come off the Widowmaker moniker given to the 911 since it was notoriously dangerous to unwieldy and inexperienced drivers at high speeds, and in the process, they revolutionized suspension and steering systems. Today, I will be discussing three examples of the advancement of active four-wheel steering, which are surprisingly complex and each are completely unique in their delivery. Nissan was the first company to introduce active four-wheel steering to the general public and did so in 1986 following the debut of the R31 Skyline. The steering system used was Nissan's proprietary HiCast system. HiCast stood for High Capacity Activity Controlled Suspension. The first version on the R31 worked by using two hydraulic actuators to physically move the entire rear subframe. Later versions like the Super worked using a dedicated steering rack placed behind the differential. Fed by hydraulic fluid piping, it would connect and move two tie rods to steer the rear wheels. It would only work at speed, assisting in lane changes or in racing, and would not function at lower speeds. Even at high speeds, the steering would never exceed more than one degree, and existed just to complement high speed maneuvers, with some drivers reporting twitching of the system before it would kick in. It would later be introduced to the Nissan Silvia S13, the 180SX, and the 300ZX Z-Car, and eventually was replaced by an improved electronic version. Highcast would continue to be an option on the Skyline through the R32, R33, and the system was improved with low-speed steering on the R34 until production of the Skyline ended in 2002. Many owners today opt to delete the system, especially if the car is used for drifting because it affects the driver's ability to feel the rear of the car. Honda began development of four-wheel steering in the late 1970s. At least one prototype from the time used two front ends from the then-new Accord that had been joined together for the project. They decided to throw their hat into the market with the debut of the third-generation Honda Prelude in 1987, devising its own mechanical steering system. A slide would move a stroke rod, which was controlled by a guide driven off of a planetary gear. This gear is driven off a center shaft that itself was controlled by the front steering box, and hence your steering wheel. Being an advancement of the active system, at low speeds the rear wheels would turn opposite of the direction of the front, but at high speeds the wheels would complement the front and to a lesser degree move in the same direction as them. It was a $1300 option at the time for a car that MSRP'd at $18,000. It became electronic, with the rear steering being done by actuator motors controlled by an ECU following the introduction of the fourth generation Prelude in 1992. Four wheel steering was included as standard equipment on the SI trim, and while it was discontinued in the States in 1994, it would remain an option for the rest of JDM production into 2001 when the Prelude was discontinued. The last four wheel steering application I will discuss here is General Motors Quadra Steer which was developed by their subsidiary Delphi and produced by Dana Corporation in 2002. Below 45 miles per hour, the system would turn the wheels to negate that of the front to a maximum of 15 degrees, which for a truck does make a huge difference. At 45, the wheels will track like normal, and above, they would be positioned with that of the front. This system was electronically controlled and could be enabled by the driver via a control panel. Want two-wheel steering? Go right ahead. How about four-wheel steering? No problem. Just as long as you could afford the $7,000 price tag at launch, though it was later reduced to $5,600 to boost sales. It also added nearly 300 pounds of weight to the truck, which is fairly negligible considering that the axle, based on the Dana 60, was wider and beefier, allowing for an additional 2,000 pounds of load rating, topping 16,000 pounds, and adding 1,300 pounds for a total of 10,000 pounds of towing capacity. It was discontinued in 2005 due to poor sales. Even as four-wheel steering fell out of favor in Japanese cars, 
European makes decided it was prime time just to add it anyway and make it standard equipment. Starting in 2013, it has been standard on the Porsche 911 Turbo, and it's been an option since the launch of the second generation Audi Q7 in 2015. The Lamborghini Aventador S Coupe and the Ferrari F12 Tour de France were both launched in 2017 with the technology. It's an odd holdover from the 80s, though it can be very useful in tricky spots.